Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another episode here of Let's Play Minecraft. Thank you as always for all of your lovely support in the last episode. I very much do appreciate it, reaching over 1100 likes. Of course, if you want to continue supporting the series, the best and easiest way to do so is simply to drop a like. If we could keep it up with at least a thousand likes per episode, that would be beautiful. But of course, if you do want to go one further, use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So, I've definitely been a busy bee since the last episode episode. I'm now up to 90 XP levels as you guys can see now and as a result of that and being in the nether what I have managed to obtain ladies and gentlemen is three with a skeleton schools which means today is going to be the day where we take down the wither boss and here's the cool thing ladies and gentlemen we already have a pretty significant amount of iron we do still need a significant amount of iron but of course now that we can go ahead and fortune mine iron ore and now that we have those giant iron veins i don't see there being too much of an issue with us going ahead and mining a bunch more iron up to the point where we have enough for a full tier 4 beacon. So yeah, it's going to be a wither killing, iron mining, getting rich, getting a beacon, dragon taking down episode kind of dealio. Uh, yeah, that made perfect sense, didn't it? <laughs> So we're going to start off today with the Wither Boss. Now, the only thing I think I'm going to do in preparation for the Wither Boss is to go ahead and make myself some strength potions. And more to the point, strength two potions, because by doing that, we'll be able to have ourselves six additional attack damage with our sword here. Which means this bad boy is going to be doing a whopping 15.5 attack damage, which is ridiculous. Do you know what, though, guys? I am just now realizing... Yeah, we've got 90 levels. Do we really want to risk that by not being prepared enough? Huh? Do we really want to risk that? I'm going to go with the answer of no, ladies and gentlemen. We need regen potions as well, ideally. So into the nether we go. We need five ghast tiers. Four for the ender crystals for the dragon later on. And one for the regen potions. Hey there, buddy. Uh, yeah, that did it. <laughs> How many did we get there? Four? Wow! Well, if we could continue having that kind of luck today, that would be beautiful. Ah! Oh! Okay, good. They didn't fall down into the lava. However, that is still not a... Can I survive that? Uh... Oh, God. Oh, God. Ah! Please survive it! <laughs> Don't do that, Python. Don't ever do that again! Don't ever do that again. We're not risking 90 levels like that ever again, okay? It's never, ever happening. All right, we've got eight gas tiers. We're done. We're going home. <laughs> there we go. Four ender crystals. Beautiful. And there's the regen two potions. All right, I think we're ready for this thing, my friendo. So all that leaves us to do is to go ahead and find a nice secluded area so we can take the wither down, hopefully, pretty darn easily. So here we are, guys. A nice... Hopefully secluded area. Hopefully there's no cave system surrounding me here because if there is then the wither is going to be allowed to fly all around the place and obviously we don't want that, do we? We do not want that. So, let's go ahead and uh, open this up just a little wee bit. Uh, let's make sure we've got ourselves the potions on our hotbar here. We'll go ahead, activate the wither. There he is. Oh, you're pretty, aren't you? Let's get ourselves a little bit of strength. The regen we'll use when we actually need it. There we go. All right, here we go. So we start off with the bow, of course, nice and simple. And then, when it comes to it, we'll go ahead and switch to the sword at halfway point. Come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's breaking his way through. But do you know what? It's neither here nor there. Now, we pop in with our sword. I'm getting uh, no damage done to me. Oh. Huh. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, when you know how to take down the bosses in Minecraft, it just becomes second nature, doesn't it? You become an absolute monster against it. Wow, that took no time at all. I didn't even need to use my regen potions either. <laughs> it's so stupid. Oh, goodness me, my friends. Goodness me. All right, well, uh, that's that done. Uh, for reference, uh, yeah, we are pretty much just here next to our little minecart system. Yeah, that, that was that. Was that. 
the wither is dead. <laughs> oh, that was just too easy, bro. That was way too easy. All right, well, uh, now that that's done, we could go ahead and actually make the beacon. And then we need to go on a mass iron mining spree. I do love a nice big mining trip every now and again, my friendos. And as I said, we find ourselves one of those giant iron veins. We could just go ahead and mine the ever-living poop out of it with a little bit of fortune, baby. Oh, look at it, my friends. There it is, the beacon. Beacon. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that beautiful block. All right, well, we're not going to be using it for now, but we will be using it in a near future mega project, okay? That is right. We are going to be beginning a mega project here on this world pretty shortly here. That is why I was wanting to get a tier 4 beacon. And to have ourselves that tier 4 beacon and therefore insta mine means that we could go ahead and take on mega projects that involve digging way the heck easier. So, do you know what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen? We're actually going to make this into a little bit of a sort of rudimentary test. You know, there's not really too much going into it, but I do want to kind of test something. We are going to make one batch of night vision potions, okay? And that means we're going to have three times eight minutes of night vision, which is a total of 24 minutes, of course. And what we are going to do, ladies and gents, is we are going to try and see just how much iron we can fortune mine from a mega vein of iron in that 24 minute space. So yeah, I figured that'd be a pretty cool little test that we can give a go here on this world. Like I say, it's not going to be like the be all and end all test of how much iron you can get in a specified amount of time. I just thought it'd be like a little fun challenge just to see like I say, how much we can get. All right, so the time has come. We are not going to start our test until we find ourselves one of the mega iron veins. Now, obviously, we did find one before, but it was a little bit of a distance away from our base. I'd love to see if I could find one that's a little bit closer to our base, so we therefore have easy access to iron. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. The size of this freaking room. And do you want to know the best thing about it? I am pretty sure... Down the bottom there, there is a mega iron vein, or the beginnings of a mega iron vein. There's also a diamond ore piece or two sort of strewn across the place, which is nice. I think this is the perfect place to begin our little test. So, let's go ahead and uh, get one of these here Nightbeast Potions on us. And upon going ahead and consuming it, we shall begin this thing. Look at that. Oh my goodness, there's loads of it. There's loads of it. <laughs> so, here we go, my friends. Uh, consuming the Nightbeast Potion. And let's begin. We are going to see just how much iron we can get in the space of 24 minutes. Three night vision potions worth of time. Oh man, this is going to be so cool. All right, so there's some more iron up here. Oh, it's all over the place, dude. It's literally all over the place, man. Oh, hey, would you look at that? I'm up to 91 levels now. Ooh, only nine more and we've achieved our goal and we can start spending our levels. Oh, and would you look at that? there's actually one there. Fantastic. So what we're going to wind up doing is actually converting these back into their raw variants. So we have a slightly better visual representation as to just how much resources we have going on here. Oh my goodness, it's just everywhere, isn't it? So when you do find these mega veins, oh my goodness, Hello! <laughs> Don't mind if I do this, son. When you do find these mega iron veins, all you need to do is just keep on mining up the tough. And, uh, yeah, eventually you'll keep coming across this stuff. Huh. Even more diamonds. Okay. Oh, wow. This is actually a good amount of diamonds. Wow. Okay. Inadvertently doing the 1,000 diamond ore mining challenge as well. Or more to the point, adding to it. <laughs> Even more diamonds. What the heck? Am I just getting incredibly lucky with these diamond ore finds? Or do they actually have a higher chance of being attached to these here giant ore veins? Like, is that something that's a thing? I mean, as far as what I've read, I don't think there's anything to be said about diamond ore spawning more near the giant ore veins. But, uh, I don't know. I think we've just been lucky. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Alrighty, my friends. The first of the night vision potions is just about to run out here. Oh, wow. There is so much iron here. And uh, we have managed to get ourselves four and a half stacks. No, sorry. Five and a half stacks of iron here. Wow. That's crazy. And all of this has just been from one giant ore vein. Get that. 
just one, my friends. Just one. Like, honestly, having fortune against these here giant ore veins is just absolutely ludicrous. So, yeah, let's continue on here, my friendos, and let's see just how much further this iron vein goes. Look at that again with the diamond ore. What is going on? This is so peculiar, but I am absolutely never, ever going to complain about it. All right, another three ore for the 1,000 diamond ore mining collection. Oh, goodness me. The question now emerging in my mind is what's going to happen first? Is my final night vision potion going to run out first? Which, by the way, I haven't consumed the third one yet. Or am I going to run out of fortune pickaxe here first? <laughs> Oh dear, if it winds up being the latter, then that's rather going to put a spanner in the works, isn't it, guys? <laughs> it just keeps going, ladies and gentlemen. It just keeps going. We are still at the same iron vein, ladies and gentlemen. And what do you know, our second night vis potion has, in fact, run out. Out. So, a little bit of an inventory update. That is eight stacks there, nine, ten stacks, ten and a half stacks is what we are at currently, ladies and gentlemen. So, if we keep on with this kind of rhythm, we should wind up with, what, 16 stacks of iron? That'd be kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? All right, well, there we are. We have our final night vis potion on the road. Let's get this test done. Oh, I'm so excited to have all of this iron smelted up and for us to have a full tier four beacon. Like, honestly, I can't tell you guys how excited I am. Oh, don't mind if I do this, son. Don't mind if I do. How many are we at now? 22 diamond ore for your boy. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Oh, and what do you know? We got ourselves a jackpot just at the end of the durability of my Silk Touch pickaxe. Oh my god, a double, a triple jackpot! Wow! Okay, that is amazing. Don't mind if I do there, son. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> That's quite a find, isn't it? All right, there we are. Wow. I mean, I wasn't too far off. 16 stacks was still just about going. We'll keep on going with this until it is, uh, like, one durability. Okay, that's not one durability. I'm now going to take it off entirely so we don't accidentally use it and break it, okay? All right. Come on. We've got a little bit of night vis left. We are going to make... Oh, goodness me. We're going to try and make the most of it, all right? So we'll grab this little bit over here. Any more for any more? Yeah, there's a whole bunch more, actually. If I just sort of keep searching around the tough here, we'll keep on finding more and more bits of iron. There we are. There we are. And what do you know? We've got us... Oh, my goodness. It just keeps going. It just keeps going, ladies and gentlemen. It just keeps going going, doesn't it? There we have it. So my guess of 16 stacks of iron was pretty much right on the money. 24 minutes worth of night viz and mining a giant iron vein is enough to get over 16 stacks of iron. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that was a test worth doing. That is incredible. I'd love to try and pitch that against the rate of a really good iron farm. 16 stacks of iron ingots within 24 minutes. Are there any iron farms out there that are capable of that? It just might be now that iron farms really aren't worth it anymore. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I haven't made an iron farm in a fair bit. So, uh, yeah. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to get the heck out of here. Because, uh, yeah, I don't want to be risking my 91 levels, okay? Oh, would you look at that? There's even more of the giant iron vein. I mean, most of it was sort of way over there. I dug, like, four, maybe five giant areas where there was just iron everywhere. And now there's yet another one. Wow. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to come back here, aren't I? <laughs> this is just crazy. I can't believe how effective giant iron veins really are for getting yourself a high supply of iron. I think it's absolutely astounding. I really do. So, all we gotta do now is start blast smelting all of this iron here. Now, needless to say, this is going to take a fair while. So, what we are going to do while we wait is we're actually gonna go ahead and take on the dragon for today's episode. But before that, Check it out, 43 diamond ore towards our eventual 1,000 diamond ore mining challenge here. 4.3%, eh? 
Not bad, not bad. Do you know what, my friends? There's a way that we can sort of semi-automate this thing, and that is to go ahead and do a little thing. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to put down a chest, okay? Going to put a hopper right there. The blast furnace is going to go on top, okay? And then we need a... Oh, that's not quite what I need. We need a, another hopper just on top of that, and then a little chest on top of this. And then, you know, I don't have to worry about coming back to base and, you know, refilling up this thing. So we'll manually put the coal blocks in there for the fuel, of course. Uh, ah. Uh, I cannot open that chest. So we open up this chest, put all of the stuff that needs to be smelted, and then it all gets smelted away. There we are. Probably the most simplest semi-auto smelter you can get. Semi-auto because, of course, we manually put the fuel in, didn't we? And hopefully, what should happen is this blast furnace will start storing up all of the XP it has from smelting up all of the iron here, right? So later down the line, when we go ahead and manually take something out of the blast furnace, we should get an absolute ridiculous bulk of XP, shouldn't we? Alrighty, arrows are ready, end crystal is ready. Let's go ahead and get the dragon taken down for today's episode. I must admit, I'm still in absolute disbelief at just how much iron we managed to get in that space of 24 minutes. I think it's absolutely fantastic that we have a decent way of getting a mass amount of iron without having to rely on iron golem farms. I think it's beautiful. I really, really do. I've always preferred going ahead and, you know, actually mining for stuff rather than relying on farms. Because at the end of the day, you make yourself these here large farms and it kind of removes something for you to do in Minecraft. Like in the case of the iron golem farm. I mean, yeah, you could always go ahead and do some iron mining whenever you want. But for the most part, you just don't feel like you need to. You know what I mean? I'd rather have that something to do than just relying on big farms. Now, that's not to say that I don't like big farms and that I'm not going to create them in this world. Of course I am. But, you know, every now and again, it's just nice to put the effort in. It really is. All right, so this time we actually only have two stacks of arrows, so we need to be a little bit more sparse and well-aimed with our arrows. <laughs> yeah, oh, goodness me. Let's, uh, let's not be a dumb dumb, eh? Alrighty, in comes the dragon. And there goes the dragon. So long, sucker. Ha 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 ha! Yeah, I must admit, though, we were starting to run a little bit low on arrows. So minimum two stacks of arrows, I think, is comfortable for taking down the dragon with, okay? Anything less than that, and I think you may be in trouble, especially if you don't have that great of an aim. I'd like to say that I've got an okay aim. Certainly not the best aim in the entire world, but I'd say I'm all right. But anyway, the fact of the matter is this. We have three out of 20 of the end gateway portals generated now. Alrighty, so at this point, my friendos, I think all I'm going to do is I'm going to AFK until all of this iron here is all smelted up. We'll see if we can get ourselves a ton of XP from the blast furnace as a result. See how much it helps us towards our 100 XP levels goal. And then what I'm going to do to finish off the episode is outline my plans for a little bit of a landscaping terraforming mega project. I guess we could always... You know, do a little bit of trading, get some XP that way. I mean, villager trading is a good way of getting XP at the end of the day. Look at that, 92 levels now. And, I mean, it's not like we don't have many, many stacks of uh, bookshelves to break down into their book form either. <laughs> oh my goodness, we got a lot of books we can sell here. All right, you know what? This is actually taking a fair amount of time, so I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, outline my plans to you guys for a little bit of a terraforming, landscaping mega project. And I think probably the best way I can explain this project to you is by bringing on my camera account and flying way above the world so we can outline the project plans. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on our camera account and let me introduce you to Project Waterways. So, as you can see, we have multiple segregated bits of river and multiple water bodies all over the place, okay? So, let's say that this area here, this giant area I'm looking looking at. This is like the entire project, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to start off on the left-hand side and talk you guys through it, okay? So, on the left here, we have ourselves a waterway that comes to a dead end, and we have like a bit of a river here which doesn't lead anywhere at all. What I'd like to do is connect this river 
to this river, and also this river to the ocean over there, and eventually I'd like to make this place here into a giant island, and what exactly is going to go on the island? I've got absolutely no idea, that's something we'll have to figure out another day. But moving around my friends, so we're now sort of in the middle of the giant project area, what we are going to do is have this end of this river eventually connect up to this massive river to the right over here. And I think what I'd like to do as well is make the water go through that little beach biome bit there as well. Now, in addition to all of that, because we have a ginormous waterfall falling down from that mountain there, what I think I'd like to do is try to give it a little bit of lore. Maybe this is the source of a giant river that is going to run through this terrain here and eventually connect up with the river that's going to connect up these two water bodies here. Alright, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to do in terms of Project Waterway. I would love for my world to be fully boat accessible. I think that would be fantastic. So to hammer the point home and to give you a little bit more of a visual representation as to the scale of project we're going for here, I've got myself a little bit of an infographic done for you guys here. So as you can see on the right hand side, we have ourselves the Waterway T-Junction that I was going ahead and telling you about the law being that the water source was up in the jungly mountains there. Towards the middle left, we've got the central river connection connecting the two rivers. And then to the far left, we have the northern ocean connection, which connects the ocean to the river system. And turning our viewpoint 180 degrees towards the back, we have ourselves another graphic here. We've got the southern ocean connection there on the left hand side, connecting up the big river system to the ocean and then on the right hand side we've got the northern ocean connection on the west side and that is going to make it so that the island on the bottom right there is an island it's completely segregated from all other land masses so yeah my friends when you really think about it water is the lifeblood for any kind of settlement isn't it so along the new river and waterways that we're going to be doing we could put all manner of build we could put docks along these places. We could put little settlements along the waterways as well. You know, give the world a proper bit of lore. So yeah, lots of stuff to be done and for us to be able to have Instamine as a result of the tier 4 beacon means that we'll be able to get this project done pretty dang quick as well. I think probably the most annoying part will be filling in the eventual waterways, but then again, you could probably just go ahead and grab yourself a bunch of items blocks and break them with a non-silk touch pickaxe and then away you go. You've got water. So yeah, my friends, let me know what you think of the mega project idea in the comments area down below. If you have any suggestions for project waterways, then do of course head down to the comments area and leave your suggestions. But anyways, for now, my friends, it's time to wrap up the episode. So here we are. Cameron Fisher says, hey, Python, loving the series so far, including the buildings and spookiness. Question, what is your favorite part of the 1.19 wild update? Love you, bits. Keep it up. Hey, Cameron, thank you so much for the kind words. As for my favorite features in the 1.19 update, it's as simple as this. The wildlife. I mean, that is the whole point of the wild update, to add more wildlife and epic things to the world for you to explore. And we still haven't even got most of it yet, you know? We haven't got the overhauled birch biomes and swamp biomes and mangrove biomes yet. There's a lot of stuff still to come in the 1.19 development snapshots, and I'm very much looking forward to going ahead and exploring them with you guys in the future. But yeah, just in general, having more wildlife life in the game is fantastic. We've got frogs now. We have tadpoles now. We are going to have fireflies in the future. And who knows, maybe some other mobs as well. In fact, as far as I can remember, I'm pretty sure the mob vote mob is going to be making it into the 1.19 wild update as well. And that was the LA, right? Am I right in thinking that or is my memory deceiving me? I think it's the LA that's being added. <laughs> 
<laughs> it wasn't the copper golem, and it wasn't the other thing. I can't even remember what the other thing was at this point. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the LA that's being added also in the 1.19 update. So yeah, lots of stuff to look forward to. So for now, though, it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode and you're excited to see more, if you're excited for Project Waterways to start shortly here, please do be sure, of course, to show your support with a like. Hit the subscribe button, of course, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future Minecraft content. But for now, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for all of your beautiful support. I very much do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.